French philosopher Pierre Teilhard de Chardin believes that we are not human beings having a spiritual experience, but spiritual beings having a human experience. Tonight on Moments, we talk about inner peace and the connection to the spiritual. Mm. Welcome to Moments. Why are you acting like a Love fortune teller? It. Because it's like spiritual <laughs> beings. Yeah. Like yeah. yeah. They always have these like drop and earrings. And it's Chardon. Well, why are Pierre? fortune tellers like in the movies always depicted as like, Hi, I see because into your don't future. Don't they do that? Let me see your palm. Ooh. Two children. Ooh. Because they're like Three. mysterious. It's the mystery of it all. <laughs> you know? But you know, I believe in that saying by yeah. the French philosopher. I don't think that we're human beings having spiritual experiences. I think that we are spiritual beings. Mm. You know, have you ever tried to just sometimes wonder what's inside of me? Like, yeah. is there, like, does it, it drives me crazy when I do that sometimes. Yeah. And I start saying, okay, I'm just sitting here. Who is this person? I know. So what is this? Like, it just, it's so it's weird. So you know weird. what? The first time that ever happened to me, I think I was like 11, and I was looking at myself in the mirror, and I was like, you're real. And it was like this yeah. weird idea that I was like, I'm a real person. I'm on earth. I have and, a mind. And I'm like, who? Like, who, who am, am I? I? It was such a weird feeling. Yeah. Coming yeah. Into like, do you also try to step out of who you are and then try to see who you are and see if you like yourself? Hmm. Never done that. I've done that. It's very interesting. And I'd like to see how this conversation yeah. goes today. Yeah. And just to see what our guests really feel like. And sometimes just to try and, you know, if you could possess like a, a gift, what would it be? Would it be a gift of telepathy? I mean, what would yours be? Uh, I always say that. I mean, yeah, I think it would be to, to travel anywhere. Astro, astro projection. Astro projection. Really? Mine would be to read minds because I would love to know what people are thinking. Oh, yeah. It's such a powerful To hear gift. what your thoughts are. Yes. Remember that movie with Mel Gibson where you could hear? Oh, what that women was so want. weird. Oh. Whew, yeah, well, while we're here trying to understand how spiritual we are, don't be scared. This is how I will be talking throughout the show today. <laughs> no, when we come back, our first guest joins us. Welcome back to Moments Nigeria. Today we're talking about inner peace and spirituality. Now our next guest is Peter Keys Adeoso, and he is a former devout Christian who became a free thinker. Welcome to the show. Thank you very All much. All right, so uh, welcome to the show. We're talking about inner peace and spirituality, and yeah. the reason we wanted to have you here is to have a different spectrum. Um, um, you are a free thinker, so can yeah. you please explain to us what that means? Because you're not a Christian, and you yeah. don't believe in God. So what is a free thinker? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, a free thinker is someone whose thoughts, beliefs, virtues, values are not guided by dogmas and um, popularly accepted um, ways of thinking of the society. Mm. Yeah, free thought is broader, but you can have something narrow called atheism, which is um, lack, um, um, lack, lack of, of belief in God. God. In God. Mm. Mm. All right? Yeah, most people confuse um, agnosticism. Agnosticism just says that... Um, Concerning God, uh, I don't. We don't know the true you nature in of higher God. Power. Yeah. Yeah. No, an agnostic is someone who doesn't believe. Who doesn't believe that we can know anything about God. Okay. An agnostic can be a theist or an atheist. Actually, an atheist is someone who doesn't believe in God. An atheist is someone who believes in God. So, so you are a free thinker. I am a free thinker. Okay, and you were once a devout Christian. Yeah. So what made you stop being a Christian? Yeah. Um. It was the Bible study. Someone asked a question in church and nobody could answer. What was the question? Yeah, we we're talking about angels, and the guy said, um, If angels don't have free will as we all believe, why did they sin? I mean, it takes free will to sin, too, because we have the story in Genesis chapter 6 that um, some angels decided not to stop following God and to follow the devil. So if they don't have free will, how did that happen? And for the first time in my life, um, I never believed someone could ask a question that I would not be able to answer in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So I went home, I started reading my Bible again from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Say, now I want to read with a critical mind, different mm -hmm. from what your pastor tells you, what you yourself read, what you've been programmed to think the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And now I start from Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. And by the time I got to chapter 3, I stopped because I had more than 250 questions already that I couldn't answer. Mm, and you know, you're talking about it from a theoretical point of view, about how you had to go and study the Bible and you had all these questions. But yeah. had you had any... You know, while you're a Christian, had you had any personal encounters with God of that course. convinced you of God's existence? Of course, no. And how did you discount those to now become? No, a no, no, no. That, 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 um, that, that. It's the same personal encounter that you have that believe Jehovah 
the father of Jesus is the true God. The same one the, the Allah guy believes, that Allah is the only true God. The same one the, the Buddhist believes. It doesn't lead us anywhere. The Guru Maharaj guys on the road, they have no, a I mean, in experience. your life, like if you had a situation where of course, I did that. you pray to God for something, and it happens. Or something and it happened, and you're like, oh, thank you, God. You know, you, you've really been there for me, and you felt God's presence. Yeah, then I did that. Then. I had that. I had lots of that. So now it doesn't happen? Yeah, now I discover that those things are not objectively true. For instance, I'd never prayed um, to pass an exam without reading or transport myself from Ife to Lagos without a car. So basically, what did you pray for? You pray for, oh, I'm reading, let me pass my exam. Then you pass your exam, you say it's God. If you happen to fail, you say, oh, God is training me or my faith was not enough. Mm. If you're sick and you have a spontaneous remission of the, of the illness, Oh, you say because I prayed. Mm -hmm. Oh, and if it doesn't go, oh, my faith is not enough. Let me use paracetamol. Now, thinking back, thinking back on all the experiences I had, mm. I discovered that they are actually they were not they were actually not what I thought they were. They were actually not objectively true. Okay. You know, these are coincidences and some things that happen naturally that you ascribe to your God. Mm -hmm. And really, I discovered that that's not the best way to have peace of mind when you talk about facing life and mm -hmm. the troubles of life. Mm. So, as a free thinker. How do, what you know you mentioned philosophies but yeah do you believe in anything what do you what, I, I mean, believe what in a lot of things okay I believe in love I believe in diligence I believe in hard work I believe in having a problem and facing it and solving it mm -hmm. because in reality that's how if you pick Nigeria for instance Nigeria is one of the most prayerful countries in the world okay um, the last Gallup poll 2008 and 2009 Nigeria has 98% of believers in yeah, prayer. Definitely. Whereas countries like Sweden, Norway, Netherlands, they have less than 20% mm. of people who believe in such. But they are far, developed than, far more developed than definitely. us. So basically, I do not believe in a lie. Mm. I, I like to be real. If there's a problem, I solve it. Mm -hmm. If I can't solve it, I accept it and move on. Mm. Because in reality, that's what everybody does, including mm. those that pray. Mm -hmm. Those that pray also pray. If the solution comes, they move on. If the solution doesn't come, they develop different kinds of explanations to cope with it. So, so how, do you explain, how do you explain the Bible, for instance? Because that's the religion I know. Okay. If I was a Muslim, I would say, how do you explain Islam? Okay. But because you were once a devout Christian. Yeah. So there's so many stories in the Bible. Story about creation, story about God sending his only son. Like, how do you explain those things? Do you think they were just written by men? Of course you know. You know the answer. Because... Such stories are all over the place. Mm. That's the truth. It's only the Bible. And that's why, and that's why if, you know, for instance, let's say Bible is a revelation of God. God, fine. How come there are other revelations? So mm. how do you know Christianity is true and Islam is not? Mm -hmm. How do you know Bible is correct? For instance, the Bible says Jesus was crucified. Mm. The Muslims, with their own literature, the Hadith and the Quran don't believe so. So how do you, because you were born into a Christian family, you're sure the Bible is the correct one. The, 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 the Buddhists don't even know anything about If you go to India, Christians are a minority. Less than 7% of the population. Mm -hmm. I want to talk a little bit about um, the way you live life, because today we're talking about inner peace and spirituality, and yeah. you mentioned love. Yeah. Um, what is your definition of love? How do you define love? What does it mean to you, and where did you learn what love is if you don't believe in the Bible or you don't believe in the Quran? I believe in loving your neighbor. What does that mean to you? Yeah, it means when you see someone in need, you lend a helping hand. Mm. Okay. Okay, yeah. but you don't ascribe it to any, obviously, mm -hmm. religious No, 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 context. no, 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 no. You don't need to do that. So, I mean, in terms of your community, yeah. I'm just, because, you know, you mentioned a statistic earlier that, you know, yeah. in this country, over 90% of us are either, you yeah, know, Muslims yeah, or Christians Muslim, or yeah. involved in some kind of religion. So, yeah. what has been the reaction of those around you to your free-thinking beliefs? Oh, wow. Thank you for that. Now, you know, this experience has shown me that in reality, good people don't actually care what you believe. Okay. They care about your person. Mm. Now, there are people who discovered that um, I became a free thinker. And they actually, in fact, they just discovered that I was actually a better person. And they don't really care about whether you believe in Allah. We may be deceiving ourselves. But in reality, I I'm sure you are going to prefer, I'm, going to, I'm sure you are going to prefer a, 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 an Ogun worshiper that treats you right that when you're coming, collect your luggage from you, <laughs> helps you do, yeah, that, you prefer that such a person to a pastor who sees you the money and just, yeah. and just hisses and walks away. Mm -hmm. So really, people have seen that, oh, well, it's a free thinker, doesn't believe what we believe. However, mm -hmm. he's still a good person, he's still a nice person. Mm -hmm. So who cares? No, yeah, but then religion is one thing. Let's not mix mm -hmm. the both. Mm -hmm. yeah. What you're saying, religion is a way of life. Yeah. And even if you practice a religion, yeah. it does not interpret who you are. Mm -hmm. But how do you go around not believing in anything 
is where we're beats because that's where I'm trying to yeah, find. How do you not believe in anything? What do you, do you just believe that we just came to exist mm. and this life is just passing by and when you die, mm. it just ends for you? What happens to the soul after you die? Mm. To start with, I don't believe there's anything called soul. Okay. Really? No, as a free thinker, oh, as a free thinker, I believe in objective evidence. I believe in, if you say, for instance, if I tell you now that my grandmother that died 20 years ago is right there under your, under your seat, mm. eating rice. What would you say? Say I'm lying. How did you know? I wouldn't say you're because lying. She's, maybe you're having. Her. Maybe maybe she's a spirit, and you're having. You see the kind problem. Now, once we go into that kind of belief system, mm. then there's no there's no. It's a it's a free loop. That means anybody brings any. And that's why somebody will say I'm God. It's on the express there, and people will believe him. Mm. Somebody will say No, I'm the one that. That that, that they are believing in spirit and spiritual and all that. Mm. Can't tell us who is lying, who is lying from who is saying mm. the truth. Mm. So that's why I don't believe in that. However, these values are devoid of that. They exist despite of those things. They are natural. A baby that doesn't even know who Jesus is can show love. You've not seen mm. a two-year-old before. I mean, doing some things they're that will be drawn like, oh, to kindness and drawn did, to did the child read the Bible? No, what about your dog? What about your dog that <clears throat> comes and protects you and knows this is my owner and mm. enemies come around and, and he barks? Mm. What's... What, what Bible did, did the dog read? Or even a mother, a mother hen, a mother fowl, mm. you're coming towards the, the, the offspring and, and she comes at you. How did she know she should protect her children? Did she read the Bible? Natural mm. instincts. That Thank you. That, that is religion. it. That is it. So I believe these things are products of natural instinct. That's my belief. Mr. Addison, really okay. quick before we go, because again, it's about inner peace and spirituality. Yeah. So that's what we're talking about. Yeah. Because you're saying you're a free thinker. Yeah. And the question is, you know, some people might not be Christians. Yeah. So what would you say is your purpose in life and how do you have, what does inner peace mean to you? Okay, yeah. Um, before I answer that question, I'm going to say this. Um, I'm not against people having a religion. Mm. You know, I don't, I'm not against people believing in anything. Mm -hmm. Anything that works for you, anything that makes you sleep at night, it's okay for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't disturb people. In fact, I have people who live with me, my, my, and my nieces. When they are going to church, I give them transport money. Mm -hmm. And when I'm chanced, I even drive them down to church That's great. And, mm -hmm. and go back. Mm -hmm. I believe that our existence has no purpose, except the purpose we give it. Okay. And my inner peace is this. I'm not worried about anything. I can die right now. I'm not afraid. Okay. So I'm not afraid of death or anything. So I don't even, what people need inner peace for, I don't even suffer those things. I don't suffer fear of death, fear of failure, fear of anything. So I, I don't even need the inner peace thing. Okay. Wow. You know, yeah, the Bible says there's an inner peace that garrisons your heart. You know the Bible blah, so blah, blah, well. Blah. <laughs> I am. I taught Bible for many years. Oh. People have died. You get prayerful people. A popular pastor died in a plane crash. I mean, so if I die today, what does it matter? Mm. So mm -hmm. with that realization of with reality, you know, you need to come to terms with reality in life. And mm -hmm. that is the source of my own inner peace. Mm -hmm. Coming to terms with reality, the things I can do, I achieve, the things I may not be able to do, oh, well, I take it and move on. Mm, well, thank, Mr. You so much. thank you so much for educating us on your very unique perspective. perspective. You definitely so you don't gave say us God's grace different See things you tomorrow to think by about. God's grace. Thank you for coming by God soon. <laughs> you don't say things like that? I don't. Bless you. <laughs> You didn't say that, that, that. No, 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 no. Okay, if that's what you mean. Yeah, I, I do say them. We're, we're out of time. We're, yeah, just, right. we're, we're just, just pulling your legs. We're just yes. pulling your legs. Yeah. That was yeah. just me right. messing with you. Right. Welcome back to Moments Nigeria. Now joining us, her name is Mrs. Harriet Okobine. She's a motivational speaker and a guidance and counselor. Uh, welcome to the show. Nice welcome to have a female to perspective. I'm um, happy to be here. And I know you're a nice you're, you're motivational speaker. Yes, please. Now, underneath, I mean, most motivational speakers or, you know, counselors, mm -hmm. they are also guided by some form of faith, you know, yes, either religion, you know, towards their guiding and towards their counseling, there must be an underlying term. So which is yours? When it comes to my own kind of counseling, because it cuts across everybody. It's not just Christians. It cuts across both the Muslims, both the atheists, and both the Christian at the same time. So whatever the situation is, is what I actually deal with. We've had a first guest, and he yes, is a free thinker. Mm -hmm. As a counselor, yes, please. if he were to come to you, okay. what would be your counseling points? If he said to you that I just find myself not believing in anything, and I'm struggling with this, what would you say? Okay. He's a free thinker. And then remember, if we take it even down to the Bible, Christ did not impose himself on us. He's a free will. You choose your path. Mm. Where do you want to go? 
You want to go left, you go left. Whatever consequences that come within your left zone belongs to you. Mm -hmm. You decide to go right, you go right. That is why he did not create us like robots, you know. Mm -hmm. We have the free way to choose whatever we have to choose. Mm -hmm. Now he has come to me, for instance, I'm using your example now. He walked into my office and now he's saying, I don't believe in anything. And there must be a situation. There must be a problem for him to want to see a counselor. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? And then he walks in and said, I don't believe in anything. Okay. So where do we take it up from here? Fine. So what is your problem? What is the situation? Mm. So based on the situation is going to bring, we're going to sit down and analyze that situation and see exactly where that problem is coming from. A counselor is just there. Sit down. Listen to what you have to say. Analyze it and give you guides. Tell you this way, that way, and then you make your choice. Mm. Now I want to talk a little bit about the connection between, or if there is a connection between inner peace and spirituality, because I know that in my own life, mm -hmm. I connect my peace to my spirituality. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, as a counselor who worked with so many people, mm -hmm. some who are religious, some who are not, do you believe that there's a connection between inner peace and spirituality? There is a connection between inner peace and spirituality. Okay, I, I, I'm gonna give this example. If, for instance, you say to yourself, you keep telling yourself, oh, I can't do this. I can't do that. You don't even make any attempts to do it. You've already registered it at the back of your head that you can't do this. Mm -hmm. My dear, in no time, it's going to start playing up and you see yourself actually not doing it. So the peace that resides in you is what you yourself feed yourself within mm -hmm. to say, this is how I'm going to feel today. Mm -hmm. Today, I'm going to get upset. Today, I'm going to feel miserable. Today I'm not going to be happy because of what has happened. You will remain sad. I'd like to ask you, you know, in terms yes, of please. here, our society in Nigeria, most people are very religious. Whereas abroad, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of people maybe aren't so religious and mm -hmm. therefore you have more atheists in Western societies. So do you think, you know, kind of back to what Mr. Adoshim was saying, okay. sometimes religion is used as a coping mechanism. So not that it necessarily gives inner peace, but just to play devil's advocate, it's used just as a method of coping with the hardships that we face. You know, we are in the third world, essentially. So use this method of coping with hardships. Yeah. You, see, you see, when it comes to this aspect of talking about Nigerians being religious, mm. more or less, we are all loyal to, you know, playing loyalty to certain rules and regulation. But then deep inside, how do we interpret the Bible itself? Because when we talk of Christianity, for instance, which is the one I know, you talk of Christianity, for instance, you are talking about how do you interpret that reading, what you have read, how does it play in your life? Mm -hmm. And that is why it is made clear that be sure of what you are doing so that you don't take people away from Christianity, but rather you drag people into it by the way you live your life, mm -hmm. by the way you talk to people, by the way you treat people, by everything you do must reflect that which you believe in. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to that being so religious, mm -hmm. we are always following this way. But how is it playing up in our place of work? Mm -hmm. In the way we do things? Mm -hmm. Even in whatever we are doing, how does it reflect? Because if it reflects truly, you and I reflect in that form, my dear, Nigeria will be a better place. When the economy is hard, people rush towards religion. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's it. But now, about uh, mind and physical that I was talking about. Yeah, there's a scientific and a physical link between the inside. I'm a doctor, I do physiology. There's a, there's a link between, a physical link between the mind and what you do. Mm -hmm. For instance, that's the reason why you most likely come down with malaria if your boyfriend jilts you. Your immunity is going to go down. <laughs> yeah, there's a link with something like immunity. Yeah, so there's a connection, as she rightly said. But the connection is physical. It has nothing to do with Jehovah or Buddha or anything. There's a physical connection between your mind and your physical, even sports people, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo, when they interviewed him, there is something inside him that drives him to gym more, to, to practice more and all that. Yeah, that exists. And I believe now, and lastly, spirituality. I believe in spirituality. I just don't believe spirituality has things to do with demons and ghosts and spirits and all that. For instance, music does a lot of healing me. Mm. I'm, I'm an audio fire. And when I'm going through some things in my life, there are some songs that I just keep playing. And no matter what it is, I just come back. Now that's spirituality for me. Mm. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Harriet. And of course, thank you for having me. We will me. definitely have you back on another. She's rolling his <laughs> eyes. Pleasure. He's so <laughs> troublesome. But this was very interesting. Thank and on you. to our viewers at home, 
it's open for you to decide your inner peace in connection with your spirituality. When we come back, it will be time for In A Nutshell. Welcome back to Moments Nigeria. We've had a very fascinating conversation. Now, in a nutshell, um, I think from both of our guests, I definitely I was, you know, I thought Mr. Adeosha's point of view was different. Um, but I think that, you know, for me, the point that I, I, I didn't feel like he answered me or where I didn't get a sense of, what do, you, what do you live your life based on? Like, what guides he, you? He answered you, all right. No, he but said he said nothing. He, he said, exists. you know, I asked him, I said, what is love? And he started to quote the Bible. I was like, mm. so what is, if you don't believe in the Bible, if you're saying being kind, being this, bro, you're quoting the Bible. Mm. Like, mm. what do you define as making sure that when you're taking care of your wife, like, how mm. do you get your principles? Mm, yeah. And that's the thing about when you're a free thinker, like, what guides you? What guides you, you know, and that's the one where I never understand. You have to be guided by something. Everyone mm. is guided by something. Mm. So. Well, for me, in a nutshell, I'm a big Jesus girl, and I share that wherever I go. I don't do religion which is where I think we kind of connected. And I feel mm. like because of the conflict in religion, we have many more people. I'm not mm. saying in the Western world, mm. there are no free thinkers. Mm. You know, he, he hits and run when he said, because things work over there, some people feel there's no need for a higher relationship mm. with the higher being. Mm. Now, but bringing it back home to Nigeria, where I grew up, where I understand, I feel like because of the conflict in the religion itself, it isn't safe for people to understand it enough. We, what we see when we go to church is doctrines. Mm. The teachings yeah. that this church believes is different from the teachings that that, that church mm -hmm. believes. Mm. It's doctrine. So finding a relationship with your maker, mm. for me, which is what I think the counselor was sort of trying to say. Yes. Finding yes. your relationship, finding yes. a calling, mm. that's yes. what really matters. Either yes. religion, Buddhist, Christianity, this, I don't feed into all of that because Christ mm. never even really preached in a church. Mm. He went about different cities doing good. Mm. So that's what guides my life mm. in a nutshell. Mm. I mean, for me, being a Christian, I feel like Christianity anchors me to my life. You know, there's almost no situation, well, every situation is in the Bible. I can't think of even one situation that doesn't have an example and some kind of solution or some kind of at least path, mm -hmm. path to follow within the Bible. So for me, you know, it's a very deep and it's a connection that between inner peace and my religion, Christianity, that I could not exist without. So, you know, I mean, but I think for Mr. Adosho as a free thinker, it was interesting to hear yeah. a different perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He said he doesn't have a problem. He says I have a problem, <laughs> but he has kids. I was like, what about, you know when he was saying that? I was thinking, but with your kids, what if they it's, fall sick or something isn't going well for them? Isn't there something you want to cling to to give you that insurance so I think that what everything he said will be okay? That he, he solves problems as they come, and if he can't solve it, he accepts that. It's just one of those things he can't solve. Mm. It's a very interesting way it's to think. It's a very interesting way to think. It's unique. It very, is unique, very interesting way to think. So. Mm.